Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel, Art Classes My Way. Uh, you can see a little bit of my new studio space. I'm still unpacking and still getting it organized. But uh, I wanted to get started on a painting that I, I have a show coming up in October. And if you hear that, that's my husband making dinner. Uh, he loves cooking, so I let him have control over that. That's his painting and jewelry smithing and that's, that's his way of making art. Um, so I just kind of wanted to show you guys a little bit about what I'm experiencing here with this and it is uh, trying to determine when your paint is pretty much too old to be using anymore. Apparently, He is having a lot of fun with that slap chop. Um, so just kind of give you guys an idea of what the paint looks like when it's coming out of the tube. Um, there's two things that my paint looks like right now. Neither one of them is a very pleasant idea for painting with. Uh, one, the more pleasant of the two, is looks like I'm trying to paint with chocolate pudding. The other is poo. So uh, this is burnt umber and I can show you here what the, uh, as you can see that is a pretty old label and the uh, it, it shows its age but I want to to show you what's going on with this stuff here and what it looks like and just give you guys an idea of what two old paints looking like in acrylics. Alrighty, so we are going to show off what this paint looks like a little bit and it's a little dark in here, sorry. <laughs> we'll eventually get that figured out. And you can see this little blob here, it kind of acts rubbery and um, yeah, poo. I promise you it's burn umber. I will show you coming out of the tube. You can't put anything back in the tube. Always keep that in mind. So I'll show you coming it out or it coming out of the tube so you can see what's going on with that. I promise it's paint. It's acrylic paint. And I got my paint and clothes on and you can kind of see he goes on kind of lumpy, kind of yicky. And while I do want my whole painting to be this dark umber all on its own you can just see it takes a lot of work in him over the canvas and it's just not a very pleasant experience at all it takes a lot of work in him trying to get him even of some imagination here if you want to say even uh using a Paintbrush, this is a two inch paintbrush. It's a sable, so it's not like a, not that you, for the base coat, not that you couldn't use a paintbrush that you would use on the wall here. Oh, here, look at this big old glob over here. Just kind of. Move all that around. Just kind of trying to roll it up. There we go, nope. Come here. So yeah, it takes quite a lot of effort and I'm gonna even dip in some water here to kind of rehydrate it, trying to get it to smooth out a little bit and move around and so on. Obviously it's still Pretty uncooperative, but it's being more cooperative than it was a couple seconds ago. There we go. And I don't want this to like dry. It's starting to get tacky here. And again, the best thing about acrylics over, uh, for instance, watercolors, and I'm using my paintbrush to kind of scoop, bring some of those chunkier areas out so that way I can even it up a little bit. But the best thing about acrylics over, for instance, watercolors and so on is that you can paint over the top of it once it's been dried. Picking up paint up in that top corner there. Not what I want to do. But. It's definitely not the greatest thing in the world to use this old paint but I do believe that this paint is somewhat salvageable especially since it will rehydrate and it is working and it will pretty much just help me with um, 
saving my really good paint that I'm gonna put over the top of it to get that nice dark rich burnt umber background that I want. So yeah, there you go. I'm gonna push this out for you so you can see the consistency of this eef. So it also comes out like a poo in addition to everything else. And the thing is with having this humongous canvas that I got here, trying to get this used up is definitely not a detail paint by any stretch of the imagination, but it'll help me cover a large surface and get this surface taken care of. There goes my cat sneezing, bad cat. It's allergy season for him and my husband as well. The water's keeping it from actually getting all my paint brush. So that's what I'm... All right, fine. Be that way. Just throw it on there like actual poo. Oh, it's awful. I know, I know. So yeah, you can kind of get the idea of me trying to move this little blob around and evening him out over the canvas what this overall looks like. And I'm sure there are many artists out there who say I shouldn't be painting with this whatsoever. But I am a broke artist and this is something my mother gave me out of her stuff for when she tried to pick up painting again quite a long time ago. I think I was in middle school when that was going on. We were both going to this um, Japanese lady in Indianapolis. She was a real cool lady. Um, Definitely had some really good point of views and very, very helpful. But at the same time, she let me do my own thing and what I wanted to do and what subjects I was interested in. Ooh, it's like a slug. Just, just, mmm. I hope you are all about ready to have dinner. As my husband yet is making dinner. Yeah. So yeah, you can kind of see that all going on. I want to get the last of this up here and then I'll show you the difference of good paint and how good paint wants to roll around instead of this stuff. And yeah, I could look, tighten this up, I know. Just being lazy. This was a, my painting or my uh, palette wasn't so textured. I could probably just splat it on there and keep going. So I'm going to use my time machine and uh, use this up, try to get it spread out as nicely as possible. And then I'll be right back to show you guys what good paint looks like. If you want to, you can slow down the video so you can watch me struggle with this stuff and really get a, an eyeful of how difficult it is to be painting with paint that's probably really too old to be worked with.
All right, so we are going to go from this old stuff here, which I'll still use to try to complete um, the rest of the background, but I'm going to show you a little bit about how the newer, obviously, big difference. Um, you know, every company goes through, uh, reworks and remodels their brands, obviously, you know, after so long. Um, again, this stuff's probably 15 years old, or maybe a little more. Uh, maybe a little less. Who knows? Uh, this is only a year old. So I'm going to put some of this on my canvas and I'm going to show you a little bit how much easier it is to work with putting it actually on our palette. And we can get it here where you can see nice smooth texture going on there. Still looks like poo, but not nearly as uh, extra chunky. I, I got poo jokes, and believe me, I'm, I'm being very good. I'm being very good with the puns. I'm trying to behave myself. But it's hard, you yeah. know? There's a reason poo jokes are universal. So I'm going to take this stuff, and you can see it moving nice and smoothly right there. Nice and creamy looking thing. And you can see he's going on so much better. He's wanting to move a whole lot more for me, be a lot smoother overall. Comes off real easy onto my paintbrush. And because he's so much smoother, I'm only painting with just the little tip of my paintbrush, where with the other stuff, you really you know, gotta work it. I'm like pushing all the way down. And you shouldn't be painting with this part of your paintbrush. You should really just be using just the tips, the tips of the bristles. Uh, the longevity of your brush will thank you. So, just putting a little bits of it here and there. Just so overall, he just wants to be a lot smoother than the other guy. I think I got some of the old stuff in that one. Now, it could be just that um, because of its age, even though it's had a cap on and everything. It could be that that paint's just dried out as opposed to just being way too old. Uh, but I don't know how my mom has stored it up to this point. It could have frozen. It could have been in extreme heats. It's hard to say at this point. And uh, freezing or extreme heat can very much affect the life of your, your paints for sure. You can see I can move this guy around so much. It's still staying nice and dark. I'm not getting all these light areas. And he just wants to be smooth and pleasant and get along with everybody. Peace and harmony, goodwill towards all. Chunky bits. Yeah. Where this guy, he, it's, it's basically he's sticky. When, uh, when you feel how this old stuff wants to work, it's just basically really, really sticky. Like he's partially started to dry out kind of universally, but then again, he's been in that tube where he can't dry out. And I'm sure the chemicals moving around and just aren't as evenly distributed for sure. So you can see whole lot better right in here. I, of course, I brought some of the old stuff down on top of a little bit I put here. But overall, a lot smoother, a lot easier to deal with, nowhere near sticky, and you can feel your paintbrush just flowing through it. So I hope this helps you guys out if you're going around to yard sales and different things like that. And you see, we're, like especially around here, where we've been having a lot of estate sales. Been finding a whole lot of old paint and now people, they want to get basically what Michaels or Hobby Lobby charges for them. And it's like, yeah, considering how old that label looks, I'm, I'll give you 10 cents for it. Maybe there's something salvageable in it, but I doubt it. Is it really worth your time? So you can kind of see what's going on here. Uh, this is going to be, like I said, this is going to be a part of a show I have next October. Um, I'm going to call it, unless you guys have a better idea, uh, don't crowd me and it's going to be showcasing a lot of uh, very dangerous animals and trying to see them in a little bit of a different way than most people see them you see a lion lay there typically when you see a lion they're always laying down and they're lazy and um, 
or you see uh, a bear, they're normally just walking along, especially in documentaries. Um, 90% of the time a bear is depicted as just walking along nice and somberly. Uh, this is going to be the grizzly bear and I'm going to do a life size grizzly bear on this. Uh, just his head, obviously. A grizzly bear's not that small. Just to give you the sense of scale and the sense of dread and uh, I'm going to be painting it in a way that pretty much the camera person in order to see this animal in this particular way, either you're seeing it as being taxidermied or you are seeing it uh, where you're you're dead. He's got you. You're gone. Uh, so, yeah, it, I want it to be exciting. I really want to showcase um, a large majority of it is going to be American uh, predators. Well, not just predators, but American animals. And just trying to get people to realize... Yeah, okay, I'm going to go have my t picture taken with this polar bear. I'm going to jump the zoo fence and and have no consequences. Just trying to get people to open their eyes a little bit about, you know, the world we share uh, with all these other living beings that they, they, they can't be scripted. They're not puppy dogs. They're not kitties. And sometimes even puppy dogs and kitties aren't puppy dogs or kitties. Um I always remember this one little girl, she, uh, we were at a zoo and she, we were in the, the shop and she's like, kitty, and she just points and I looked at what she pointing at, it was a raccoon, it was a stuffed raccoon, it was in the shop, but it was a raccoon, and it's like, in, in Indiana, this little girl goes running up to, the, to a raccoon thinking it's a kitty, it's going to rip her arm off and beat her with it. Uh, and I, I know I'm probably being way too overly dramatic about the whole thing, but this is on top of that, I, a painting I did um, a couple of years ago of, of a blue herring, very common bird for Indiana, whether or not if you live in the city or not, you've seen cranes and blue herrings. Uh, my husband, he's not a stupid man by any means, but he actually like, oh, is that, a, that's a nice painting of a pelican. And it wasn't just him. When I took it in to get it framed and, and uh, matted, then the framing and matting person goes, oh, that's really good. That's a, uh, oh, a pelican, right? Okay. You, you lived in Indiana your whole life, and you jumped to pelican before blue herring. And, you know, to, to a lot of people, animals aren't as important as they are to me, but I this is something wildlife has always been something that's been very important to me. Animals are very important to me. So that's kind of the idea of the show, a big idea. Um, a couple of other things I kind of want to do is uh, uh, badger. And I found my husband, we were coming up with ideas. My husband made the suggestion of a, a mongoose. And one, I, there are some animals I've picked from other countries that um, I wanted to do in this. I got a lion, a cheetah, and a snow leopard. Kind of want to limit it to those guys. I might have to branch out a little bit for some of the reptiles I want to do. Um, but my husband, he says, you know, the, uh, the mongoose, because it's a little animal that you, you know, it takes on this great big monumental task of taking down a cobra and everything. It's like, yeah, I really don't want to have another animal from the other side of the world I, I want to try to keep most of it local and I tried researching and I found out basically and I love researching things in addition to everything else because uh, I want to learn about my subjects or at least learn something new every time so I ended up finding out the American badger is the equivalent of our mongoose except in mongoose and cobra it's badger and rattlesnake I I was floored. I did not know, but it makes total sense because rattlesnakes looking for a den. They think it's uh, abandoned, and oh, <laughs> morning. Uh, so yeah, that's the that's kind of my ideas, and I want to put a, a badger and a rattlesnake because that's something you never really see, you know, and it'd be so cool. I think. So yeah, uh, so this is going to be one of my uh, my paintings that I'm going to do, and. If you guys have any cool ideas, any suggestions, animals, uh, an animal scene, I, I'm afraid that the coyote is kind of going to be a protagonist for a lot of things. 
Um, I do want to do the um, American uh, boar, which is really, they started out, trust me, the, learning what I've learned about boars, the fact that they were originally domesticized pigs that had gotten loose, and learning what I've learned about what just pigs can do, pardon my language, but holy shit, that is, uh, whoa, it's, it's so damn cool. Um, pigs are actually pretty amazing. We don't give them the credit that they really deserve, for sure. Um, and, but most of the pictures I found, you know, the, involving dogs, and uh, a lot of people could see that as like animal abuse. I mean, they're hunting dogs, and but they get in some, they, they have Kevlar vests on. It seems like a pretty awful situation. And, you know, bringing up, oh, well, yeah, this is what we're using to mesticize. This is what we're using our best friends for. And I want to kind of keep it more on the wild animals. And you guys need to learn this stuff about these wild animals as opposed to what we're doing to dogs and hunting dogs and things like that, which is a whole other subject, uh, obviously, that don't want to get into with that one. I want to keep it on the wild animals. So I've decided, well, if I substitute those dogs for coyotes... And then it keeps it on, which coyotes, they will go after if they can find a, a boar to go after, and even a sick one. It's going to tear you a new one if you're not watching. So that would be something, you know, pretty cool, I think, and as far as an image and really making people think. And, you know, and I have one for a buffalo. Um, really make people think of buffalo in a different way, rather than just these lumbering, docile beasts, these stoic beasts. They can hurt you. Uh, so yeah, so this is going to be a part of it. I hope to see you guys for it. Uh, it's an acrylic uh, painting of a bear. And again, from ear to ear, yeah, like that. Boop, boop. Watch, I'll end up doing Winnie the Pooh. Bunch of hair. Obviously, it's going to have to actually go up here. Boop, boop, boop. Got the mane of hair, the snout, and also because of the collars, it's going to work out really well with this burnt umber because, you know, there's going to be very little that is the work you back to where you need to be. Uh, there's going to be very little of this that isn't going to be that bare and it's going to be a part of his hair and, you know, this deep darkness. It may even be a little bit of black here and there, but it's going to look real cool and I hope you guys will join me for that. Um, things are moving a little slow, but things are going to be picking back up again here real shortly. And if you want to help me out, uh, share, like, subscribe, comment. Do all those things that you people do because you're wonderful and totally awesome. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. So thank you for coming and hanging out. Bye!